All right, guys. It seems like quite a few of you like that couch series, which is what I'm going to be calling this. Um, so let's go through the next setting. Was, or the next most requested thing would be uh, port, porting any kind of porting for an engine uh, and what matches the build best. Okay, before we get into that, there's something that's very important that you guys should probably understand. Engine builders, tuners, whoever it is in the higher end spectrum of the industry, they have the opportunity to turn down jobs. Okay, so we can be selective on work we want to choose based on the personality of a person or the type of work that the job is or the complexity, whatever, whatever decision is, right? And as such, right, so you'll see, you'll see certain shops do certain things. And um, I just wanted to preface that as you have to understand that um, the industry is changing and it's a generally good thing. Um, if you see motorsport wiring guys, they're not going to take on your shitbox car. Um and the guy that tunes Motec, Mtron, whatever else is not going to go tune an RX-7 all the time. Um, but there's a growing development still in the rotary community. Um, the value of the cars is going up. So with that, we can expect qual uh, quality of work to go up with it. Because people were now expecting, instead of this thing being worth two or three thousand dollars for an fc or whatever it is and you put on a two thousand dollar whole turbo setup now it's like okay ten thousand dollar car ten thousand dollar setup proper um approach and proper spending we want these things to last because now they're becoming rare um so getting into that with engine porting um the type of porting you want is going to be matching essentially the overlap of the engine and where you want to place the power band. Imagine this is a set of cams, right? So a stock port REW is pretty big. Um, stock port FC is pretty small, um, but it makes really good grunt down low. So one way to think of this is, do you want your power to come on early? mid-range or late um, and then this is all based on do you want to spend money for balancing because if you want a top-end motor well a stock balance motor is not going to last uh, you will run into clearance issues you will run into um, the apex well actually not the apex seal but the the corners of the rotor side clearancing themselves against the face of uh, the irons. So balance is a big thing. Um, so to me personally, I have always been against bridge ports um, simply because of thermodynamics and understanding it's a terrible idea um, of having, you know, your corner still riding on a little tiny region. But I mean, some people make them very safe and and they'll last forever. Like a half bridge on a semi perfect port is probably my favorite if you had to go big power and you wanted the big top end. Um, when it comes to, let's say, streetable mid-range. That's super common. That's what most people are going to ask for. I would say a medium-sized street port and something like an EFR... 83 or 84 74 um, those are probably the perfect match for, for engines um, now the back pressure is a little bit high on those because you're still only running through a 74 millimeter turbine wheel um, so that has to be taken into account so you're not going to be running over maybe 22 25 pounds of boost at the very peak because back pressure at that region you know that much um, back pressure is going to be large at that point. 
and back pressure is actually what will damage apex seals. Um, any kind of reversion like that is what will damage apex seals. And it goes back to why I don't like bridge ports is because you have hot, hot. So if you're thinking of an engine as iron, you know, housing iron, uh, you've got cold air coming in and the center line is hot. So what ends up happening is it'll banana the apex seal as you have, you know, cool air coming in. So this region isn't expanded. The center of the uh, housing is hot. And then the outside getting cool air again is cold. So versus a semi-peripheral port, you have a port right there in the middle. Everything is equalized temperature. So um, it keeps apex seals happier because now thermodynamically the engine is balanced. Um, so to take a step back, sorry, the copy has not hit yet. It's, it's been a weird week, but I'm working on my car finally. Um, the most common, like I was saying that I would suggest would be a mild or, or medium sized street port. Um, and a lot of different engine builders will show you like what their large or medium or whatever it is before you get it. Cause they say like, look, I've done a bunch of these. You should go with someone you trust. You should go with someone who is upfront with you or if they're scheduled back half a year, like mine, they're pretty good, <laughs> pretty good people to deal with. It's uh, very impressive. Um, so realize that good things take time and uh beyond that you really want to decide where you want to place a power band based on your driving so for me if i'm going to go roll racing it's like oh shit top end right if i want to go canyon carving um that would be pretty much mid-range you really want to focus on something that's responsive out of the corners um rotaries are not good for bottom end that's a v8 swap what are you thinking like that's just not what you're building an engine for um i mean you could run like a a high compression six port which already has huge ports by the way i'm, I'm not sure if you guys realize that it's massive um, you can run an NA6 port with a small turbo, which is a terrible idea, but it has to have a big back housing to handle the airflow. So that would be like, a, let's see, the ultimate response low end engine would be six port NA, very mild porting done to it, because just to clean up the stock stuff a little bit, and like a Borg Warner. SXE, let's see, 362 with 80 backside and a 0.9 of our turbine housing. That'd be some secret sauce right there. You would go ahead and have a car that would be, it would be really responsive and uh, it still would be able to flow top end. So that might be a new uh new project to have for someone so probably get one of those sent out pretty soon um uh, let's see beyond that top end stuff the bigger you can go the better i mean peripheral port semi peripheral port um if seth's out there doing right now he's like 31 to 35 pounds of boost on his what is it sxe 476 that thing's putting down 380. Oh, perfect. You could daily drive that thing. It's so smooth. Um, so there's plenty of two rotors out there kicking ass. Uh, of course, you've always got Mize and, and Dom doing their thing. Four rotor life. Uh, plenty of badass three rotor guys. They're very quiet. Gotta go watch out for those three rotor guys. They're, they're definitely hunting for, uh, for some big power. I need coffee. But, uh, 
hopefully that helps a little bit with sizing. Just do it for your usage. Like if you if you live in a certain climate where you need, I don't know, more response or or you want more top end or whatever it is, think of it that way first and then match everything with it because you're not gonna get like the best of all worlds all the time. It's going to be some balance of I traded this power for this power, right? Even the most modern turbos are going to get 4,000 RPM power band. Or, like, maybe if you're super lucky, 4,500. But, I mean, if you consider really big port work, what's most likely going to happen is your power band is narrowed, right? So, stock port, very wide power band, you know, light street port, very wide power band. And as you go up in port sizing and port uh, shaping, you're going to be losing out on the the girth of that power band. Uh, this is not always the case, but it generally is the case. It's why you're getting such a huge kick of power on the top end. So it's just kind of a, a trade-off and, and you really need to understand build something for your needs. That's it. So my shit's fucking crazy. It's going to be starting this year and it's a similar peripheral port with a very mild street port, uh, with a lot of secret sauce thrown in there, but it's balanced to be over 10,000 RPM, but due to oil, uh, for not being a dry sump, 10,000 is like, that's your limit. Do not add more. <laughs> you are going to incredibly shorten that uh, engine lifespan. So make sure that uh, that you talk to your engine builder. Uh, they're very limited on time generally. Um, and if not, talk to your tuner, whoever that is. doesn't really matter if it's me or there's plenty of others out there. Um, but we will generally have kind of like the keys to the castle of understanding and matching if you have a set of needs and if you can answer these questions, I can guide you in the right direction. Because if you don't answer the questions, I'm like, uh, what you want? So I can't, I can't tell you what ECU to go with. I can't tell you what turbo to go with. I can't tell you what porting to go with or what fueling to go with because you need to define it first for yourself. Once you get do that, then we can figure out what we need. Okay. So hopefully this one helped you, I, you guys out. I'm uh, just sitting on the couch, another couch series. Uh, really enjoyed this with a little fucking selfie stick thing. Came out great. <laughs> I can't believe I still have this from SEMA. So all right, y'all. See you in the next one. And uh, let me know what you want next. Okay. So this was porting and general consensus of what's happened with uh, the community which is pretty cool.